Good evening, viewers, and welcome to this edition of NTV Sports Page. It's Wednesday, the 9th of February, and I'm Curtis Morton. In our headlines, has the Leeward's Hurricanes missed the trick? And in our feature for this evening, gold takes gold in EPPS Senior Boys Road, really. We'll take this break, and I'll be right back. Hello, this is Premier Mark Brantley. St. Kitts and Nevis is about to embark on its Census 2021. Every 10 years, the country engages in a census exercise to determine the number of people that are living here and where they're living. This information is absolutely critical to the government so that we can plan proper policies and ensure that all of our people benefit from our development. I am inviting you, therefore, to engage and to go out and be a part of Census 2021. It's you, me, us, 2021 census. Hashtag be counted. Well, I'm back and we start with cricket. The big question is, has the Leewards Hurricanes missed a trick? In previous years, the West Indies Cricket Board has featured a youthful team in the regional tournament, featuring many of their youthful rising stars. In the absence of such a team in this year's regional tournament, which commenced today, Wednesday 9th February, many pundits are thinking that it would have been useful if the under-19 cricketers who represented the Windies in the recent Youth World Cup would have found spaces in the teams in their respective territories. The Windward's Volcanoes ought to be highly commended. Within their squad are Akeem August, the Windies Rising Stars captain, and Teddy Bishop, who had a fair run in the recent tournament. Many local cricket pundits are disappointed that the trio of Onaje Amri, Carlon Boyne Tuckett, and Jaden Carmichael were not included in the Hurricane setup at the expense of some of the more seasoned veterans who may be in the twilight of their playing careers. Just to remind you, the Lewis Hurricanes team, Jama Hamilton captain, Rakim Cornwall vice-captain, Munson Hodge, Casey Carty, Devon Thomas, Skyron Powell, Russ Powell, Nino Henry, Jeremiah Louis, Colin Archibald, Amir Jago, Terence Ward, and Coley James. Kofi James, that is. The reserve players are Daniel Doram and Kian Pemberton. Meanwhile, the fallout from the England's disastrous Ashes tour has moved from management to the dressing room with James Anderson and Stuart Broad, the country's two leading wicket takers in Test cricket, left out of the squad for the forthcoming tour of the West Indies. Neither Anderson nor Broad, together the most successful new ball pair in Test history, will travel to the Caribbean for the Fleet Test series after an interim selection panel of Andrew Strauss, Paul Collingwood, and James Taylor decided to give opportunities to a younger set of pace bowlers, including the uncapped pair of Saki Mohammed, Mahmoud Sari, and Matthew Fisher. The England men's test squad is Durwood captain Jonathan Bairstow, Zach Crawley, Matthew Fisher, Ben Fawkes, Dan Lawrence, Jack Leash, Alex Lees, Saki Mahmoud, Craig Overton, Matthew Parkinson, Ollie Pope, Ollie Robinson, Ben Stokes, Chris Wokes, and Mark Wood. Now to football, the SKNFA has been partnering with a county referee from the United Kingdom in introducing children to football officiating. We'll learn more in this SKNFA feature by Andre Huey. For a few years, the SKNFA and Robert Windle, a well-experienced referee from the UK, have been conducting small clinics in schools on refereeing. It's a way of introducing football officiating to young students and develop an interest in the skill from an early age. Chair of the Referees Committee on the SKNFA Executive, John Bergen, explained the merit of this activity and gave a history into the partnership between Mr. Windle and the SKNFA. Mr. Windle has had a long outstanding relationship, a long standing relationship with the St. Kitts Nevis Football Association and the people of St. Kitts on a whole. He is a, a referee, a past referee, um, 
in the English in the English county of Cambridge and he has over 45 years of experience. He still do referee on a part-time basis in the county where he's living in and he has been coming to St. Kitts every year for the past 15 years on a cruise ship and every time he comes he visit this um, at least two or three primary schools to begin to get young people involved into match officiating or refereeing. As part of raising the standard here in St. Kitts and Nevis we believe that the youths are the future and so this, this partnership with Mr. Windle is very significant for us. We want to continue to build on what was there. Mr. Windle and his wife recently conducted a session at the Seven Adventist School under the auspices of the SKNFA while on a short visit to the island. My name is Robert Windle and the organisation is the Peterborough Referees Association and also Whittlesea Sports Association. Yes. We've, been in, we've, we've been at St Kitts many, many times and this is the, the third year that we've actually come out and joined the St Kitts Football Association uh, in activities with local uh, primary schools in, around the area and the aim is to try and give uh, young people an understanding of uh, respect towards match officials and how difficult it is to become a referee. Uh, the response has been excellent. I mean, the children sometimes are a little bit nervous because it's somebody different coming to the school. Uh, we then put them in a nice group and then we give them the opportunity, who, who wants to be a referee? And maybe one hand might go up. But also, uh, well, roughly about 10 minutes into the session, every hand goes up and says they want to be a referee. Some of the participants spoke about their experience. The session was good. We had fun being referees. I learned a lot about it, how to be patient, how to like, have teammates, how to be very good. Session was all right. We learned a lot about how to be referees and linesmen. I learned from this session is that you have to move in a position to see the players so that you don't see any mistakes or any cheating in the game. Even if the referee is wrong, you still got to, you still got to be happy because if you argue with the referee, you, you, might, get, you might get out of the team. And, I, and I'm so thankful I got a chance to do this. It was very fun and enjoyable. And I hope, um, you come back to do it again. Thanks St. Kitts Football Association. The SKNFA continues to nurture the future of officiating in St. Kitts and Nevis as it continues to raise the standard of the sport. Thank you so much, Andre. We'll take this break and I'll be back with our feature for this evening. The management and staff of the Navy's and Seaport Authority want to ensure that you are safe. Our security officers, administrative staff, cleaning technicians and auxiliary personnel are busy on the job protecting the health of the users of the Navy's and Seaport Authority. They are the port's frontline personnel who are working around the clock to help protect you. If you must travel through our ports, please remember to observe all the safety protocols. Practice social distancing and wear masks during all interactions. Utilize the sanitizing stations available throughout and practice respiratory etiquette. Everyone has a role to play and a safe Nevis depends on you. Well, I'm back and tonight athletics is in the spotlight. The Elizabeth Pemberton Primary School held its cross-country relays on Friday, 4th February. Greenhouse would have won the first two races in the combined juniors race and the senior girls race. They were all set to take the senior boys event as well, but Goldhouse had other ideas. The race commenced at Cleggott and the athletes went through Cox and Montpelier before making their way back up the hill to the school. This race, interestingly, featured two sets of twins 
who obviously gave it their all, competing for bragging rights at home. The final results saw first Gold House, second Green House, and third Red House. Let's take in some excerpts. So we're gonna have the penultimate race, which is the senior boys relay. And uh, right after this will be the feature of the day, the teacher's race. That's gonna be something else. And running. Now we have another locksman in this one. I have to give credit to all the locksmen. They're very determined, but the goal house athlete, he's in charge for the moment. Right on us, right on us. Really pushing it. Come Zion, come Zion! And the come Zion! Athlete, Jamaican run! Holding back a little bit now. We have the other athlete way in the back. So gold, green, red way in the back. For the moment. But the gold house athlete looking particularly strong. Here he is as we come to Beaumont. Gold still leading. Green. Come Zion! Come Zion! Not really pushing right now. He seems to be obviously tired. Golos looking strong. Looks back. Has nothing to worry about right now. Just a habit they have these athletes when they're in front. They keep looking back. Instead, they keep looking forward. So coming down the hill past um, Daddy Grant's residence. Daddy Grant who passed away recently. Down the hill they come. Gold house. Boys waiting for that critical Stop. button pass. Here it goes. There's the button pass. Gold Deeper. house. My goodness, he's racing down the hill. He looks as if he's running a hundred meters. What a flourish here. Greenhouse just about to pass off in the distance. But this goal house athlete, my goodness, he's really moving quickly. Yeah. Greenhouse is also catapulting down the hill. Greenhouse could be closing that gap. This could be interesting because Greenhouse has certainly made up some slack here. Greenhouse looking pretty strong for the moment. Now starting to slow up, but so too is um the goal house athlete as he approaches this incline oh so apparently they're brothers so this could be very interesting because it's all about bragging rights when they go to the dinner table tonight what you say morning actually so yeah looking pretty similar and very determined he wouldn't want his twin brother to catch him they're on different houses but it's all about bragging rights when they go home tonight so, he has practically cleared the hill, looking very strong indeed, and his brother is lost, he has slowed up badly. So his brother not as determined, not taking the hill as strongly, I'm glimpsing him now as he virtually tops the hill at the, in the far in the distance, but this one Seems to be pretty much in control. So, seems as if he has picked up some speed as well as he got the encouragement. And we have some tourists here very much interested in what's going on as we have the baton pass as the goal house athlete comes up the hill. Coming up the hill now. Joshua seems to be handling it pretty well. He's not really pelting out, but he has a steady pace, and that's what's gonna do it. He who coming down the hill now. Joshua is the name. We approach Montpelier Hotel. It's 
So we are just about approaching Montpelier Hotel. Joshua still looking calm. It's a little flustered as you look back just for a quick second here. There's nobody in sight. Really has nothing to worry about Joshua. He could make the sun stand still right now because he's leading by a long shot. Well over the hill comes somebody. But Joshua still has a pretty good lead. Don't think he seriously has anything to worry about right now unless that's Usain Bolt coming through there. So passes the Montpelier main gate. He's not going to push it down the hill. Taking his time. He should be approaching Batten Station shortly, soon, somewhere. Getting some encouragement now. Turns the bend. And so I'm sure that the schools are very happy that with the COVID cases declining, more activities being allowed. Still have to be extremely careful though. As Yo, here tell, he comes. Uh, everybody head back up. Here's the button station, final button station and goal house athletes, let's see how he pushes out he knows he has a bit of a lead he'll have to try to maintain that lead and he has a hill to deal with that hill should be coming up soon and let's see how he handles it a lot depends on how he handles it so we understand that more twins in this one I think that's his sister giving him some encouragement. So the other twin should be turning the corner in a bit. So it's all about twins here at the Elizabeth Pemberton Primary. And again, it would be all about bragging rights. So sister has stayed back to probably look out for the next brother who hasn't turned the corner as yet. This one looks strong. The incline will get a little steeper just about now. But he hasn't backed off from his pace. He's still having a pretty good pace here. Now this is the real test. But he looks very determined. Looks as if he's saying I'm not going to back off. There's the other one. The other twin. And the sister is running alongside that one. And we understand that mommy is somewhere close. There's mommy. Here's mommy. So mommy is here. So how can mommy encourage one and not go look for the other one that's behind? I guess she says, well, sister is behind, so I'm going to deal with the one in front. Not that I love him any more than the other one, but he's in front already, so I'm going to show off my athletic skills until he burns me out up the hill. So... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mommy says, you go ahead. And mommy turns back now to look for the other one. So, mommy finally decides to go to look for the other one. There's a sister or somebody or auntie or somebody there to take care of the one in the lead. Well, they're getting the cheerleaders into the act now. It's Ryan, it is. Ryan is the name of this particular twin and he's taken first place for Gold House. The Gold House flag being waved majestically. But here comes Ryan. Here comes Ryan. Large and in charge. His twin brother should be somewhere coming in shortly. Well done by Ryan. Obviously very tired. So where is his twin brother? Twin brother is coming to now. So it's Brian now. Ryan has already come in. And here comes Brian. So Brian looks as if he's taller than his twin brother, but he's in second place. 
So he's representing Green Brand. So representing Green is Brand. As he comes in in second place. And the Greenhouse supporters chain on here. As he comes in. So Brand second for Green. Now we have the horns blowing as we see the final athlete, Red House athlete coming through. A bit of a motorcade behind them. This looks like Young Pemberton. Young Pemberton getting the baton way behind as a little bit of a motorcade escorts him in. Here he comes, Young Pemberton, making it in third place. The Hans Blair, Pemberton completes the race. And that's it for the senior boys. Well, that's our package for this evening. I am Curtis Morton, reminding you that you can watch sports if you're not fit. But to play sports requires fitness, diligence, and a sacrifice. Have a good night.